Man, a full day of bending things over and drilling holes. It's not as fun as it sounds. Uh, I think I'll finish the rest of this tomorrow. Okay, had some good dinner, some good rest, got up this morning, did some morning exercises, a bit of other stuff, and now I'm ready to get back to the rest of these pieces. All right, I need to drill holes in the ends of all of these, uh, and I have almost all of the parts made. I still have to make those pieces that hook into these things. But other than that, yeah, just these, these and those things. Uh, all right, let's... All right, Orig. That means this is the original one of these, so I can measure the holes on all of the other nine from this one. It's always important to keep one original because if you start if you start measuring from one to the next to the next to the next your errors build up and then you end up with a mess so you always anytime you're measuring from from a piece not from a tape measure you have to keep track of the one you're using to measure and always use the same one I actually know a guy Joe <laughs> who had a who had a situation at a job once where he, he did that wrong it's a good lesson though uh, okay. Oh, I'm gonna have to find more of this stuff somewhere. Okay, I need eight more of these. See, we, oh, right here. If I'm lucky, yes. If I cut that right down the middle, I should be able to get two pieces. Doesn't matter that this is a little bit shorter. That's fine. That's just what gets riveted in. All right, I should be able to get eight out of that. Two, four, six, eight with a bit left. Good. Let me just check something here. Ooh, that's just barely wide enough. If I use the whole thing. Now if I if I cut with the circular saw down, I'm gonna lose a bit of material in the middle and they're not gonna be the same size as these. However, if I cut it with my shear, I can cut a zero line that takes off no material right down the middle. So maybe I'll cut them into pieces like that first, and then I'll just have a little cut to do with the shear. Yeah, that should totally work. The marker line is about the same thickness as the saw blade ish. Although these don't even have to be perfect. Yeah, just a rough size is good. I 
guess it's a good thing I bought a whole box of these markers. It is really nice having them. Here, let's do it. Oh, I can't put it that way. I have to put it that way. Oh man! All right. Hopefully. All right. Oh, that should be good enough. Yeah, good enough. Yeah. I should probably explain what's going on with these connections. All right, I've got quarter inch rivets. And I don't want them to go all the way in like a normal rivet would. I want them to stick out. So the way I do that is first I drill a quarter inch hole in the material I'm going into. And it needs to be a nice snug hole. So I want the rivet to fit in there pretty tight. Next, I need to put a washer on the rivet. And this washer needs to fit real tight too. Now if I use a washer that I get out of my box of washers, it's too loose for this. So I have to drill my own washer that fits really snug. And then I can put it in there. And I can put the loose fitting washer at the other end because uh, it'll be fine over there. And I leave it sticking out about that much. Clamp my washers just to make sure they're not moving. And then get my rivet puller and do the thing. I always keep these. It's basically a stainless nail, which is a useful thing to have. Okay. Now I'm just going to cut the end off of this because I don't want all that sticking out. And I'll hammer it down a little bit and I'll hammer this down a little bit so it's not crooked. But what happens here is the rivet pulls, you know, the nail thing inside up inside here, which expands this metal and that's how the rivet grabs on. So that it's too fat to fit through the washer, right? But then this side also expands. It just doesn't expand as much. However, with a snug washer on this side, the whole thing ends up being real tight. And then I cut the back of that off and I can just... Uh... Yeah, I'll hammer it a bit to make sure that's nice and flared out. And then this is a little crooked, so I want to hammer that side to get it down that way. And I'll, the reason I'm not just going to bend it, I don't want it to become looser. If I hammer it, it'll actually become tighter if I press it that way. Ah, good enough. All right, I have a lot of parts. Wait, wait, there's one more thing I need to make. Uh, these attach to the roof, and I want to have something under the I'm just using pieces of PVC. Yeah, as soon as I get these cut, that means I can start assembling things. Yeah. Well, I thought while I'm operating on these solar panels, I may as well clean them. And I don't know if it's showing up on the 
things are filthy. So I've cleaned up to here right now. Look at all this crap. Blocking my solar power. I'm gonna have to clean them all really good. Yeah, man, this was yellow when I started. Oh, that's gonna make a big difference. Well, I got five panels on there and they are looking great. And I'm about to lose my son. So I'll just get that last one tomorrow. The one over there. It's all ready to go. It's got all the stuff on it. I just need to bring it up. And, yeah, I don't feel like doing it in the dark. Besides, I need to go make some dinner and go eat some food. I didn't skip lunch today, which is excellent. Feeling pretty energetic. <laughs> all right. I gotta go make some food. Oh, I gotta jump in the ocean. Oh, I'm going to jump in the ocean. Man, I bet I could have gotten that six solar panel up today. But I was, I spent half an hour talking to some girl online today. Man, it's probably worth it.